Hey guys, what is up? It is me, Pagey, here once again with another video on the Arrowverse as a whole. There's just a bunch of topics to talk about here because they decided to slap us in the face. So we were only a few days away or just days away, what do you want to call it, from the return of the Arrowverse with that, of course, being the start of Batwoman Season 2, which will be followed closely by Black Lightning in about like two or three weeks, and then The Flash and Superman and Lois over the next month or so. Of course, we're still waiting on return dates for uh, Legends of Tomorrow, Supergirl, and Stargirl, but they should come soon enough. Probably sometime in March for those just wondering or just curious about it all. But with the return of the Arrowverse just being so close, there has been an information drop, as I said, slapped in the face, regarding certain things and certain topics and certain shows and, of course, certain characters, which, of course, are very interesting and worth a discussion. Now, first off, I'd normally be live streaming today, but news drops, so unless news drops tomorrow, we'll stream tomorrow. If not, we'll go to the next day. So keep your eyes out because the streams are always fun. So the first thing to go over is the crossover for this season. So a while ago, might have been, like it might have been in May or June of last year. I can't remember exactly, which I don't think any of you can blame me for, as last year was, uh, well, it was something. Anyway, sometime around the middle of last year, we had, I think it was the CW upfronts, where it was announced that a crossover was planned for the upcoming season, despite the pandemic playing out in front of everyone's eyes, and that this crossover would be between Batwoman and the newest entry into the Arrowverse, that being Superman and Lois. Now, we knew that these two shows were chosen due to the HBO Max deal, where after they air on the CW each season, they go to HBO Max. So having the crossover uh, between those two allows no jumping between streaming services after the season in order to watch the crossover. But the last time we heard anything about this crossover in general, it was back in, I think, I want to say September of last year. At least it felt like it was that long ago. It might have even been longer, but I think it was September. But that silence since that point has now been broken. So speaking with TV line, Caroline Drears, who of course is the showrunner for Batwoman, was able to confirm that the crossover would not be happening this year and had been cancelled due to the pandemic. They actually used the term cancelled. But this is what she had to say specifically about it all. We're not really able to cross over because physically we can't cross crews due to the fear of exposure to COVID. So if Supergirl weren't ending this year, I would say there would be more of a possibility, but I'm afraid uh, uh, that at least this year, we're not going to be able to tap into that dynamic. So yeah, it, uh, it doesn't look like Supergirl will be coming back to Gotham anytime this season, uh, at least in her final season, but I guess it would have uh, like been sort of, you know, pointless to set up any sort of relationship or friendship between Kara Zor-El and Ryan Wilder's uh, Batwoman, saying it would lead, well, it would lead nowhere after the crossover because Supergirl's show is ending. So that's why Caroline says if Supergirl was not ending this season, it will be more of a possibility in making the crossover work and take place because they would try and go, let's make them friends and everything like that. But of course, another show ending this season is that of Black Lightning after four seasons, though it does have a potential spin-off in the works that of course being Painkiller. The main show itself, however, is wrapping up come the end of the season. But this is what Javicia Leslie, who of course is the new Batwoman, had to say on crossovers and also tying it into Black Lightning as well. I'm so heartbroken about the COVID situation because I know that it's Black Lightning's final season and I would have loved to do a crossover with them. Nefessa Williams and Jordan Calloway are really good friends of mine and it would have been great to play with them and be superheroes all on the same show. That would have been epic. Whatever show that has black people on it, I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to do these crossovers with because I just want it to be a super black crossover. So I don't know what that's necessarily referring to exactly. I don't know if that's just, we wanted, maybe she just wanted a black lightning crossover specifically, but I think every hour of her show has black characters, I think. In regards to like heroes, I'm not too sure, but anyway, I guess you have Wonder Girl. Well, I guess Wonder Girl's not black, but you have Naomi coming in. So maybe they could do a crossover there. We don't know if that exists in the Arrowverse yet. I we'll have to wait until the show actually starts coming out. But yeah, while it sucks that there won't be a you know big crossover event coming this season, all we can do right now in regards to crossover stuff is just look forward to next year's crossover, which would most likely be like the you know back to the normal scale if you want to call it, like around that Crisis on Earth X or Crisis on Infinite Earth sort of scale, or even something like Elseworlds, which Sort of had big moments like that, but didn't have the amount of episodes and everything like that as well. So it'll be interesting to see what they do. You could even argue that maybe whatever uh, Diggle is doing in his appearances this season when he comes back could set up that crossover. 
like uh, you know for next season they would have known for a while like i'm um, it's one of those things where they know something for a while and they just decided decided to randomly drop the announcement because someone probably asked about it but i think they would have known that this crossover wasn't happening for a while um and it wasn't like superman and lois and batwoman were just not going to meet this year um so maybe having diggle set up the threat a year in advance would be pretty cool because that's pretty much what elseworlds was elseworlds was setting up crisis so instead of spending an entire crossover event setting up another crossover you could just use a single character popping in and out of the shows um throughout the season over different appearances to set that up and set up the threat which i think would be fairly interesting um it just depends how it's done also one of the things i've always said about diggle showing up is that if there's a storyline there you have to watch all the episodes or watch all the shows and that's just like, that's just not... Like, the majority of people don't watch all the shows. Like, I think a majority of people would watch two or three shows, but not everyone watches every single show. So, I don't think they can have a, a linear storyline with Diggle running through those episodes. So, if it is specifically maybe setting or hinting up the uh, crossover for next season, I think that would work. So, let's hope that that's maybe what they're doing. Um, but I'll have to wait and see. But in regards to a crossover for next season, the one I've been wanting for the next one to be, because I think it just would be cool... Is like a crisis on two earths thing with the crime syndicate and everything like that because you have all our heroes in the arrowverse and they could be taking on like not doppelgangers but people with similar play- uh, powers but you can use cameos or actors um or cameos of actors or just have those actors in those roles from previous things so you could have like michael rosenbaum from smallville playing either lex luther on the crime syndicate earth, earth or he could play johnny quick which is because he voiced the flash in the animated Justice League show. So there's a couple of different things you could do with Crime Syndicate. So CW, if you want to ring me up, I've got some pictures, just let me know. But moving on to some other DC TV related topics, and this has to do with what's going on with the current seasons that we're well, about to start watching in a few days with Batwoman, but then obviously over the next month or so, and how they could end early, as well as the future of a certain someone in the Arrowverse or just on TV. So Mark Pedowitz, who is the president of the CW Network, did an interview, and as you would expect, was talking about everything to do with his network. He's not going to start talking about Disney Plus or something. He's going to talk about the CW. So one thing that came up was the possibility of some of the shows wrapping their seasons early, so cutting off a few episodes, in order to start, and I quote, normally, for the next season, so they premiere at their usual time, which would be in October of this year. So we're going to have two seasons in the one year, which is weird. Now, there are 10 scripted series, 8 returning and 2 completely new ones, which will premiere over the next 6 weeks on the CW. This including Batwoman, All-American, Nancy Drew, Walker, Legacies, Riverdale, The Flash, Black Lightning, Charmed, and Superman and Lois. Now, at this stage, currently, all the shows are on target to reach their episode count. So, with, like, Flash, it's 18 or 19. Superman and Lois, it's 13. Uh, Batwoman's 19, I think, or 20. Uh, Super, oh, well, I guess Supergirl's 20, even though that, it's not premiering any, anytime soon. However, obviously the important thing to remember, the elephant in the room, we are still in the midst of a pandemic. Despite vaccines starting to roll out, people are still getting sick and, you know, that you don't want it to spread because it's it can be deadly. So where a certain show ends their season in regards to the episode number could change tomorrow, but at the moment they're on, they're on target. Now that was coming from Mr. Pedowitz himself, like the, that information, but it wasn't direct uh, a direct quote. We do have a direct quote from him though, so here we go. Do you cut the orders of some of the shows this season so that they have time to ramp up for next season? If it's an issue, we'll know by March. You have to end production on whatever you're doing now in time to turn it around to have a fall. So this is important. The actors just can't go and do two seasons in a row. It's too crazy. And you just got to, like with the Flash specifically, the Flash cast, they didn't get to go home for Christmas. They had to stay in Vancouver for Christmas. So the Flash specifically, the cast would be demanding like, can we just go home and see our relatives and stuff like that for a couple of weeks and stuff like that. So, and if we have to come back and quarantine in Vancouver, we'll do that. Even though at that stage, it might not, they might not have to do that, but um, like they need a break, specifically the Flash. Like they didn't get a break at all. Now to help speed up returning series turnarounds and get the shows back into production sooner, the network is, is uh, considering commissioning writers to start earlier and produce scripts for next season before they've been formally green lit. Now it could be said that this is already actually in the works as there was that news that uh, about Stargirl Season 3 that popped up the other day, like last week sometime, where it was reported that it was already in the works, well, Season 3 was already in the works, despite Season 2 not even having like wrapped up filming, let alone aired on TV. But in regards to this, I'm sure we will hear more over the next month or two, roughly, especially when they start to announce renewals and pilot orders for the next season, which would include 
potentially the show of like Naomi as well as Wonder Girl and maybe Painkiller as well once that backdoor pilot airs. But the last thing to talk about is Swamp Thing. Now the show obviously aired on the CW over the end of last year to a solid response like in regards to ratings and everything like that, which was good considering the show has like been out for over a year or something at that stage. But this is what Deadline and Mark Pedowitz had to say on our jolly green friend from the murky waters. Elsewhere, Pedowitz revealed that Swamp Thing is unlikely to return to the CW, but hinted that the DC Comics character may have a small chance of returning to the network in another form. The series, which stars Derek Mears as the eponymous uh, creature who fights malevolent forces in Louisiana with the help of a doctor, originally launched on DC Universe before premiering on the CW in October. Pedowitz said that the show performed well digitally for the CW seed and was happy that it aired it, but that would, uh, but it would like to focus on shows such as Wonder Girl, Naomi, or Painkiller if we want to go in that direction. It'd be interesting to have Swamp Thing on Legend of Tomorrow. That would be a fun way to do it, but I'm not sure that would happen. So, hey, will we want Swamp Thing meeting Constantine on Legends? I'm here for it, and I don't think too many people would be against it because that's like a fan casting. Well, that's like a fan dream to have them two meet in live action. So. One episode, let's make it happen. But thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, it'd be awesome if you could drop a like on it, show support. Let me know in the comment section down below your various opinions on all of this. Very curious to hear what you guys have to say. Do you have any theories in regards to the crossover for next season and maybe Diggle setting it up? Let me know in the comments. And of course, if you are new to the channel, why not subscribe? It's free, it takes two seconds. Why not do it? And I'll catch you guys on the next video. Goodbye.